At the iceberg, do you envision other state agencies moving in this direction of privatization or some kind of partnership? And is there a cost savings as you look at this $8 billion budget problem? Well, is there a cost saving analysis look, to I'm talking to you about Turnpike. You have to figure it out. Mark will be involved in that because we're going to have to hire bankers to help us to do things. Uh, we may have some uh, bankers involved in gambling initiatives, depending on what we do there. I just got a memo today from a company that says that there is the possibility of privatizing the Department of Liquor and netting conservatively, and I, you know, you've got to check this stuff out, a billion dollars. Okay, we know we're going to do more privatization of the prisons. Uh, right now, we, we, we would think about privatizing more services. We may think about letting private companies do prisons because, you know, the costs are lower and the security is the same. Uh, we're going to think about, yeah, privatization is something we have to think about because it saves money and it brings in, uh, I think, in many ways, a greater accountability than we have in the government. But that doesn't mean everything gets privatized. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. The most serious offenders in our prison, we don't want to privatize that. We want to keep control of that. If we look at the, if we look at the turnpike and find out, you know, we're in a bad market, and we're not going to get the, the numbers that we want, and I have a number in my head as to what would work, if we don't get the number, we're not going to do it. We, and we don't want to use these dollars to try to patch a hole, because that's sort of like using one-time money. So let's just take the turnpike, for example. Let's say we sell it for $2, okay? Well, maybe one dollar goes for infrastructure, and the other dollar goes into some type of annuity, a revenue stream, that we could use, you know, to, to take care of, of needs uh, as we see fit. But, you know, you just don't want to go and blow all that money, Jim. It's sort of like, you know, when somebody, uh, somebody gets a bonus. If you take the bonus and you got to blow it all, then you have nothing for the rainy day. So you have to think about it and you have to be careful about it and you have to get the right dollar for it you have to hire the right firms but you have to do it you can't sit there with an asset that is underutilized um, and where you could like they take the Indiana example on the turnpike uh, you know they got I think they got six billion um, is the number that I recall but they put enough covenants in where they actually feel they have better control of that interstate now than they had when they ran it themselves so you just don't do these things quickly, and you don't need jerk them, and you think about the downside, but you just don't think about things for the for the next hundred years while the, the god darn ship is sinking in the in the harbor. In terms of the consolidation and transitioning to Jobs Ohio, um, for the folks who work at Department of Development now, do they need to be worried about their jobs? Uh, no. Uh, what we're going to do, and, and Christy and I are working on that, is uh, we're going to meet with all of them obviously next week. Um, if you, look at the, if you look at the Department of Development, there's about 400 people. Um, by the count that we've kind of done, again, it's, uh, I need to do a little bit more. It looks like about 60 of them are in the development function. The creation that would be a jobs development function. Many of them are in a lot of other programs, like uh, helping in uh, insulation for low-cost housing. A lot of federal programs are taken through, uh, uh, through the Department of Development. So what we really want to do is focus on the job creation uh, and kind of the, the, the granting programs and things like that that help companies come to Ohio and, and so on. So uh, we will be working with all those folks, and uh, I have been told, and I've met with several. I mean, there's some really great folks uh, in that in that group, and you know, some of those folks will come over to Jobs Ohio, and and some will go into some of the other uh, other functions, and, and some won't go anywhere. I mean, you know, look, this is not this is again when you're talking about being efficient, you're talking about being effective. If somebody is not doing a good job, there isn't any reason to keep them in that function. We're, we're doing them a disservice. But look, this is not because you're there, you're out. I just named a person in charge of mental health who's been working in uh, Medicaid. And, um, you know, there are uh, John Martin, you know, who's developmental disabilities. He's a holdover. This, we're not on any, any kind of a jihad, but, you know, the simple fact of the matter is is that if, uh, if people don't do their job, they're not going to be there. And we also, at the same time, want to have our own team. You know, I have a right to put my team on the field because if I don't have my team on the field, which I'm held accountable for, and if I do this by not having confidence in my team, then I'm not serving the people. So uh, maybe some will be kept, maybe some won't. I mean, that's, you know, if, let me ask you this. you think you'll have a job next year? Who knows? Actually, the best thing that ever happened to me was when I was fired.
I was fired in uh, 1989, uh, VP of Marketing, the CEO, and I didn't get along. And uh, after that, I uh, called up a buddy of mine, and we started CKS, and that was the company we had a couple people, took it public, sold it for $350 million, so it turned out okay. <laughs> Mr. Clowney, are you going to be uh, taking a leave from Sequoia the next six months? Yes, yeah. yeah, for the next six months. I'm still uh, on the board. The, I'm on five boards for Sequoia, so I'm still on the boards. But uh, uh, no, I'm taking a leave uh, from Sequoia. My partners have been so gracious. Uh, and many of them, as John knows, are supporters of John and, and have been very supportive of, of what he's done over the years. So uh, uh, both from the managing partner, Mike Moritz, and you know, on down, um, they've, been, they've been fabulous. Mr. Kwame, do you see Last potential question. for the business interests of Sequoia or your personal business interests to conflict with the decisions you'll have to make with the Department of Development? Well, have, just having a, an hour meeting with the ethics, what, what, what is he called? The ethics committee. The ethics committee. Uh, it's actually, um, it's both good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is I have like zero business in Ohio. But wait a second here. I'm a venture capitalist, one of the larger firms in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, we've created, uh, the companies we've invested in are, uh, now represent 10% of the NASDAQ in value. And I have no business in Ohio. That's good news in this job, and that I, as far as I can see, I have zero conflicts. Like, you know, I'm, we're, we're shifting through everything. Uh, but that's kind of sad, too. <laughs> So, uh, uh, no, we'll, uh, uh, I, I see no conflicts, and, um, and uh, I've, been, I'm, I've been given the training on, on, on what to do, so, uh, no, no conflicts. Do you have any other ties to Ohio? I mean, why take the lead, work for one dollar, come to Ohio, do all the stuff? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's three things. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to. I'm not going to do a John Boehner on you. That was a tough question. Um, uh, I've, I've always one of my life goals is to help a million people. I did it 30 years ago. I wrote it down. I said I want to help a million people. So that's one of my life goals. I don't know if I'll help 1,000, 2,500, or whatever. Second thing is, this guy's unbelievable. Uh, I trust him with my life. And third thing is, you know, it's so cool to. To help people, what's most, what's the best thing on the planet? To be passionate about your job. Okay, I, I can't think of any nobler profession. Okay, and so working with the folks in Ohio and working with John and working with Chris and working with all these is let's bring passion back to it. And uh, when you walk the streets, I think when he says it, when you walk down Palo Alto, and again, again, I, I can only tell you from my experience because that's my experience. People are passionate about what they do. I'd like to see the same thing when I'm walking down the streets of Columbus or in Cincinnati. I mean, it's just 40% of the people are gone in Cincinnati. That's crazy. That's just, that's sad. But one last thing. I will give, I, I, uh, one of my companies produces bottles. Uh, it's an energy drink. And he produces the bottles in Youngstown, a company called Exal, E-X-A-L. That guy's plant is unbelievable. He is the number one guy on the planet in creating these bottles. He does it for Bud and for Coke. He is creating new technologies for doing all. I saw that go, oh my gosh, we could, you know, that whole light manufacturing industry should be, it, this, should, this place could be number one on the, you know, in the States and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm, I go on too long, but there's a lot of opportunity. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.